In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I created this 3D car animation inside of Blender. Now the first thing that you need to do is import in a car model. There's tons of 3D models online that you can go ahead and download, but I'll have the car that I use in this video down in the description below. And once you have your car imported into Blender, it should look something like this. But what we need to do is actually rig this car. And the best way to do that is using an add-on called Rig a Car. It's free to use and I'll have the link to that down in the description below. And also a tutorial on how to actually rig your car because I'm not going to be going over how to exactly rig the car just because that'll take way too long. And you could honestly make a whole video on just how to rig a car. So I'll leave a good tutorial down below that you guys can go ahead and watch now once you have your car fully rigged it should look something like this this will make animating the car a lot easier once we go ahead and do that but for now we want to go ahead and model out our scene and i'm just going to go ahead and model out a simple bridge here so let's just go ahead and add in a cube once you have your cube you just want to go ahead and scale it down and stretch it out to the length of a pretty decent bridge once you have this all laid out we can go into edit mode and start messing with this and adding different shapes so i'm going to go ahead and create some curves on the sides of this road here so let's just go ahead and create some loop cuts by hitting Control r i'm just going to create one on both sides like this and let's just go ahead and extrude both of those faces so now we have some basic curbs we can also go ahead and bevel these edges to both of these by hitting Control b now we have these pretty basic edged corners here that just make it look a little bit more like a curb now let's go ahead and create some arches for this bridge so i'm just going to go and create another cube and let's go ahead and apply the mirror modifier and we're going to change the axis to our y for this case and inside of edit mode we can go ahead and move this cube to where we want it to be and we can also scale it down and the mirror modifier will just mirror everything that we're doing to this one cube extruding the faces is a super simple way to create pretty much any object you want honestly it's super helpful so knowing how to use that can really be helpful on creating these different shapes here and just like that we have a little archway now let's just go ahead and add another modifier and let's just use array here and let's change the factor x to like six and let's just crank up this count here so it covers the whole entire path and I kind of want to space these out a bit more so let's just do like 10 for this and that should look pretty good now to create the top of this bridge I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate the bottom that we have here and we're just going to align it to the top right here and maybe just create some different insets here and extrude the bottom just so we can get some different shapes and different angles like that and then I'm just going to create another cube here and bring it back up to the top. And let's just go ahead and model some simple beams. So let's just go into edit mode here and create something that looks, I guess, something like a beam or some different object that would be in the ceiling. Something like this should work. And then we can just go ahead and apply another array modifier. Lastly, I'm just gonna go ahead and add some simple railings here. So by using the cylinder, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this around. So now we have a very simple railing that we can just go ahead and duplicate to the other side. And there we go. That is pretty much all it is for modeling our scene. Now we need to go ahead and start texturing everything. So the first thing I'm going to go ahead and texture is obviously the road here. So let's go into Google and just search up like a basic road texture. And let's just go ahead and download this. And let's just drag that texture into the shader here and bring it into the base color. And as you can see, the texture is actually all messed up here. So what we actually want to go ahead and do is go into edit mode. And let's just uh, uh, select everything and create a new material here and let's just assign it to this blank one and just selecting the top one here let's just go ahead and assign this road so now the road is only on the top here then we can go into uv editing and let's go ahead and hit unwrap and then go back into that by hitting u and let's just go ahead and q project that now in the uv editor panel over here we can just select everything by hitting a and scale it up to match the road over here and we can also scale the y-axis so that the white lines aren't as small and there we go just like that we have our road texture now for this node right here you want to make sure that the roughness is almost pretty much all the way up and that this specular is down pretty much because you obviously don't want a shiny road because that's not what it's like in real life but another thing you can do is actually go ahead and add some water by bringing in a wet like road texture and bringing it into the roughness right here and then I just went ahead and added a color ramp just so I could kind of tweak the different values here. As you can see, I have more control over it. So if you want to have that, you can just go ahead and go into Google and just search up what noise texture and anything like this should do. So once you have that downloaded, you literally just want to bring that straight into the roughness right here. Or you can go ahead and add some different mapping coordinates and a color ramp. Now with this other material that we created earlier, we can just go ahead and add a concrete texture. So let's go back into Google and let's just find a concrete texture to use and something like this should work. So I'm just going to go ahead and download this. And once again, you just want to drag that into 
into the base color. Now let's just go ahead and fix this texture. So inside the UV editing, we can go ahead and hit U to unwrap it. And let's just go ahead and Q project it once again. Now moving on to the pillars here, let's just go ahead and create another material. And I'm just gonna go ahead and bring on another concrete texture I have here. Um, it looks just a bit different. So we're just gonna go ahead and use it. Same thing, we need to go into the UV editor and unwrap it and Q project it. Now for the beams, I'm just gonna go ahead and create another new texture for this. And I just searched up beam texture into Google and there's tons of different styles here. So we can go for like a wood look, but I'm just gonna go for this like rustic kind of metal here. So let's just go ahead and download this. And same thing again, we just wanna go ahead and UV unwrap this. And while creating these textures, another tip is you can just bring this color straight into like the specular and roughness. And then you can also add in a bump here. So just create a bump node and run the normal instead of bump normal and the height into the color here. And then just mess with the distance here. Don't really mess with the strength or else it kind of messes up. So yeah, I can just go ahead and create a more realistic effect. The last thing that I want to go ahead and texture is this railing here. So we can just go here and create a new texture and let's just bring the roughness down specular and metallic and there we go now we have a simple like railing or whatever you want to call this a pipe and it looks pretty cool so now it's time to animate our car so we can just go ahead and add a path to animate it or we can go ahead and just animate the actual car itself without like parenting it to a path and everything so that's what i'm going to go ahead and do so just make sure you're in pose mode here and select this bottom one that's like a blue arrow here and let's just go into the bone properties here and set a keyframe for the y and go to the very end and we can move this y value to whatever we want it to be honestly i'm just going to have it go towards the end here and let's just play this back and see how fast it is now i don't want it to be going that fast so i'm just going to bring it back a little bit and now when we play that back that looks pretty good so now we can go ahead and add a camera into our scene so let's hit shift a and bring in a camera and I'm just going to go into the camera here and hit camera to view and I'm going to be using a 60 millimeter focal length here and positioning it kind of low to the ground and let's just set a keyframe right here for all of these values and let's go to the very end then once you have your camera positioned to where you want it to be on the end of your frame just go ahead and set these all to keyframes so now when you play it back you should have your animation and the camera should be following or doing whatever you have it for as your animation now you may have seen that I have an HDRI in the background so just go into the shade editor and go into world and you can add in any HDRI you want. Um, HDRI Heaven is a great place to find HDRIs to use. So if you look on that website and just find an HDRI that you really like, just go ahead and import it into Blender here. To add an HDRI to your scene, just go over here to this like little like world, I guess, and then go into color and then hit environment texture and then click this little folder right here and just import whatever HDRI you want. Now, if you want to add some buildings to the background, a super easy way to do that is actually just using an image. So go to import and images as planes. And just go ahead and use a buildings PNG that you have that you can literally just download off of Google and just scale it up and move it towards the background here. We can go into our camera also and see how it's looking. Let's move it back here and then rotate a bit so i just went ahead and duplicated these buildings a few times and then also added in this huge light right here that is set to like 80,000 watts here which is basically just brightening up the whole scene and then i have this cube here that i literally just made i just made a cube and uh scaled it up like this um, but inside that cube here, if I go into the uh, shader, there's a principled volume that is going into the volume here. And you can just copy these settings. They work pretty good, or at least my scene here. So you can tweak them or whatever. And then I also went ahead and added some lights here. I just went ahead and added a cube, both sides, and then added a emission, and then just some other little like nodes here just to kind of mess with it a bit but obviously you don't need that you can literally just run the emission straight into the surface here and you can also mess with the color of these lights here so if you go for like a blue or something you can honestly get a super cool effect just by messing with these uh, different colors if you want to kind of go with like a different color for your style of video then go ahead and use that but i'm just going to go with like a warm Kind of color here now i'm going to go ahead and run through my export settings really fast so uh obviously my render engine is on cycles and gpu and for this render i'm going to be going for 300 samples and 
we're just going to keep pretty much everything else default here. You want to make sure that you have motion blur turned on. And then in the second tab right here, you can go ahead and mess with the resolution if you want. But I'm just going to use this resolution because I kind of like how this uh, style is. So I'm just going to keep that and keep the frame rate to 30. Now for the file format, I like to use this like FFmpeg video and make sure that the video codec is H.264. So yeah, just go ahead and copy the settings I have for my encoding right here. Now for the compositing, you don't have to touch this if you don't want to, but here are the settings that I use. So if you want to add uh, different nodes here, you just want to make sure that you have the use nodes selected here and you can just add different things like the layer or whatever, uh, just by hitting shift A. And if you want to see what you're doing to your actual image, just make sure you have a viewer node here. So as you can see, without these different effects here, it looks pretty boring. But once I have them uh, added to my render here, kind of just brings everything together. So yeah, I would highly recommend copying these settings for your render. But once you have that, you're pretty much all done and ready to render out your video. I'm not going to render out the video for this animation just because it's going to take a long time. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you guys what one of the frames look like here. So I went ahead and rendered out one of the frames and as you can see it looks super clean i honestly like how this turned out i could even bring this into like photoshop or lightroom or whatever and add some different color grades just to make it look even better and that's what i would actually recommend for you guys to do when you guys export out your video is to add some different like effects and color grades to it but yeah that is pretty much how to create a car animation inside of blender um i didn't go like totally too in depth on some parts just because this video would literally take forever to make and would be probably like an hour long so I don't really want to do that so I hope you guys did have some success in creating your guys's own render or if you guys just wanted to watch this video just to kind of learn how to use blender I guess then I hope this video helped you guys but if you guys want to see more blender tutorials in the future then definitely make sure to drop a comment down below and while you're at it make sure to leave a like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys on the next one peace out